Welcome to Life Mastery TV, your source for inspiration, empowerment, and fulfillment. My name is David McLeod. I am your Life Mastery Coach, author of the book, A Life to Die For, and also a co-author in the best-selling series, The Wellness Universe Guide to Complete Self-Care. Um, all, of, all of these books are available over on Amazon. I hope you'll go check them out. There's a lot of good stuff there. Today, we are talking about... Uh, from Flight to Flow, that's the topic title, and this is episode number 179. So you know, folks, when life circumstances seem chaotic, the idea of going with the flow can be a difficult one to embrace. Sometimes the universe delivers events or conditions that lead us to question what we are doing or why we are even on a particular path. And we may find ourselves feeling angry or frustrated, perhaps even to the point where we actively fight against our situation. On some level, we know that the resistance is futile. I mean, they told us so in, what was that, Star Trek, The Next Generation. But our ever so helpful ego minds continue to strive against these external events regardless. And so in some cases, in a vain hope of trying to gain control. When we are challenged by unpleasant or even painful external circumstances, we may have no idea how to return to the beautiful and peaceful flow state that we all seem to enjoy so much. Well, in this episode of Life Mastery TV, we're gonna consider some options for regaining that state of acceptance and flow. And to help me in this task, I've invited a gifted retreat planner and business coach to join me and share some of her wisdom with you. As someone who has gone through her own challenges in dealing with the chaos of life, my guest knows how to create beautiful healing spaces and has a lot of ideas for reconnecting to the gentle flow of life. So please join me in welcoming my friend and colleague to the show today, Tamara Golden. Welcome, Tamara. I'm so glad to have you here, and I'm looking forward to seeing your shining, beautiful face on the camera. <laughs> there you Hi, are. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. And we've had a few other people join us so, uh, since I started the recording. I want to say welcome to you and uh, just remind you, feel free to put comments in the in the uh, chat. I see Lolita is here from Florida. Thanks, Lolita, for, for, for letting us know that. And uh, so, you know, I, I, Tamara, I want to just say, first of all, I've been trying to get you on the show for a while. I'm glad we were finally <laughs> able to work it out. It took it. It took a while to, you know, to sort through all the challenges that we we had to deal with, but we managed to flow right into it, and I think that's uh, that's beautiful. So, I guess I guess I, I'd like to know, you know, you you shared with me a little bit about some of the challenges in your own life and what's been going on and and how you have made some new decisions and so forth. I'm wondering if you'd like to share a little bit about that and help us understand why this is such an important topic for you. Oh boy, David, where do I start? Well, we we have a long we have a while to chat, so we can tease this out a little bit more. But I'll just say, um, you know, last year, of course, 2020 was not easy for anyone, right? It was a, such an anomaly year for all of us with the pandemic and going into lockdown. And what was? I mean, I was one of those people who was. Um, impacted in a, uh, I, I will say a more serious way in the sense that, you know, what I do is retreats. I am, um, I'm a retreat strategist and, and, um, and planner and designer for heart-centered entrepreneurs. And so I work literally, think about this, I work at the intersection of gathering and travel. What were the two things that we weren't permitted to do all last year? Gather and travel so you know uh, <laughs> so in March well, outside of that life was great right oh yeah right peachy keen right <laughs> uh, I mean I just was thank god I wasn't like a single mom homeschooling and to those single moms out right. there who did homeschool or single parents like chapeau my hat is off to you because I don't know how you did it um so uh you know it was it was a tough year for all of us in so many ways but I got um Here's the juxt of it, okay? And we can tease this out. I know that there's, there's a lot of, we're gonna be to talk about here, but I got really quiet. In March of 2020, if you were an entrepreneur, oh, and Stephanie just popped on. Hi, Stephanie. Um, if you were an entrepreneur in 2020, then the buzzword in, uh, in March and April was, and I even cringe at hearing this word, pivot. 
How are you going to pivot? What are you going to do to pivot your business? How are you going to pivot to virtual? Pivot, 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 pivot. And, you know, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of anxiety. None of us really knew what was going on, what this looked like. I mean, the whole world was shutting down. When did we ever experience anything like this? I mean, I was wondering if this was going to be the bubonic plague, like you made a Star Trek reference. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I was wondering if this is going to be like, bring out your dead. Like there's going to be people like dropping in the streets. You know, if I could do, I'm going to pull out a Monty Python reference there. Right, right. So, you know, literally like we didn't know what this was going to look like. So I got quiet. All right. In the midst of all of this noise and all of this chaos and all of this fray and all of this media onslaught, where I go for my answers when the, you know what really hits the fan is I go in and up. So I really, I connected to source and I go into meditation and I ask for answers. And I was told, stand your ground and stay your course. Now I asked that question many times, trust me, over the course of 2020 and even into the beginning of 2021, you know, what, what do you want me to, what am I supposed to do here? And I got the same answer every time. Stand your ground, stay your course. Now, I have to tell you that receiving that message, you know, it's wonderful to receive messages from the universe. It's wonderful to have clarity. But when you get that message in the middle of a pandemic, that's a challenging one. <laughs> well, I'm curious, what did that actually mean for you when you, when you understood what the message was saying? What yeah, does that I actually mean, mean? Stand your well, ground, stay so, so thank you for asking, David. So what that meant, okay, so I'm going to, everybody who, anybody who knows me for half a second knows that I, I grew up on the East Coast. I was East, East Coast educated. I live on the West Coast. I'm one half of each, one half get her done and one half woo. But what that meant to me, I mean, I know I've been shown that what my mission is here is, is what my mission is in this lifetime is to help raise the energetic vibration of the planet. All right. That's what I'm here to do. The platform through which I am here to do that is in-person retreats and who I'm here to serve are the light workers. So all of my coaches, healers, transformation leaders who are out there doing this amazing work and really bringing impactful, meaningful change, growth, healing to their clients. Okay. That's what I'm here to do. That's how I'm, who I'm here to support. And that's how I'm here to support them. So that's what stand your ground and stay your course meant to me. It meant I was not supposed to go off and do virtual retreats. Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've done a few of them and I've actually done a few that were very successfully done, but you know, did I want to be three days every weekend on a zoom? Uh, you know, Oh hell no. So, I was not here to do virtual. I was here to do in-person. I, I eventually went and explored for a little while doing corporate retreats, business retreats. I had a business mentor who said, I think, hey, you should go over and look in that area. There's a lot more money over there. I went and explored that for a while. That did not land in my DNA. Those conversations didn't land. They didn't resonate for me. So I know I'm here to serve my heart-centered entrepreneurs. I know how I'm here to serve them. I know what I'm here to do. So that was the stand your ground and stay your course. But then there was a whole year where it didn't matter. It, it didn't, I couldn't operate in my business. It's not like I could work smarter. It's not like I could work better. It's not like I could come up with some snazzy new initiative. I mean, we couldn't gather and we couldn't travel. And so here I was getting this very clear message and I had no one to deliver that message to because the average entrepreneur in 2020 didn't have the foresight to be thinking that we would eventually come out of this and hey maybe my tribe's going to actually want to gather gather in person after being in lockdown for a long time nobody could really hear that back then for for uh, the longest time so i felt like a crazy person standing at the top of a mountain shouting out and with no one to hear me so mm -hmm. i just had to um face a lot of demons last year i had to face a lot of scarcity demons i was set up with the blessing of being able to have savings and to have savings to rely on and a lot of other blessings that came my way and you know the the ppp and and other things so you know that was there were so many blessings that were sent my way and i i recognize them as being support given to me by spirit by the universe by god whatever your belief system is to actually stand my ground and stay my course but i will tell you it brought up a lot of demons and i it 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 just i i had to I, to get from, I mean, I fought it. That's where the fight f to flow comes from. I fought it. I fought it all year in 2020. I fought it all year. 
And then finally I got to this year and understood that I just needed to be in flow. And once I stepped into that, things started to really change and manifest in my business. And we can talk a little bit more about that if people are interested, but it's just, that's where the fight from, from fight to, to flow really, the crux of it is, is my journey through all of last year, getting this very clear messaging and, and yet struggling against it and, and, you know, fighting demon after demon that came up as a result of going through that year. Right, right. So talk to me a little bit about the experience of, of fighting it. I mean, you said for all, for almost all of 2000, you felt like, or 2020, I should say 2000, man, my brain is gone. Um, Don't take me back that far, David. I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, you you said that you had to you were you felt as if you were fighting the whole way through 2020. Yeah. And it wasn't until the new year began that all of a sudden you realized you had to start going into the flow. I'd like to know the difference in the energy that you experienced and how did you make the transition? Because a lot of people are are struggling even now with with exactly the same energy that you were talking about before. So I'd like to understand more what it was for you. I mean, how, how did how did you experience in your body and in your surroundings this notion of fighting and how did it how did it show up and then how did you make the transition? All right. Well, I'd like to tell you that I I'd like to tell you that I proactively made the transition, but it was a gradual process. All right. Sure. So let me just start with that. But let me talk, tell you to answer your first question. What did that feel like or look like? me fighting it through 2020. So I would get this message. I would go into meditation. I'd get this message and I'd come out and then I would start going into that ego space of, okay, I've got to do something. I've got to do, I've got to, you know, cause I, I told you I was one coast, one half East coast, get her done. And I'm very much a type A, like get, do, 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 go, go. And, um, and yet I, you know, so I kept trying to work on all these new initiatives and I would, you know, try to go do, I do this course so that I could make my online course better. I went and did a course on LinkedIn so I could connect with more network and connect with more uh, other entrepreneurs more successfully. And, and so I was still about the doing, doing, doing. And I got on all, all of these Zoom calls. I, I belong to a, a network called eWomen. And, um, you know, the, the benefit of, of the pandemic is you could jump on all of these calls by, via Zoom, right, all around the country. So I was jumping on all of these calls and I was taking all these courses and I was, you know, um, working on all these initiatives and I was exhausting myself. I was, ex I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't making any money, but I was working like 60 hour day, 60 hour weeks. <laughs> I mean, that's like the definition of insanity right there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you're going to work 60 hour weeks, you should at least be banking a lot of coin. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, um, so I was still exhausting myself at the end of the day. Cause I was still in that, like, dude, oh, I've got to be doing things. And I'm, you know, hired a business coach and working with her on all these new initiatives and doing this, that, and the other thing. And, and I got to the end of 2020 and I was in complete burnout. I was in complete burnout from continuing to do while not honoring all of the emotional grief and sorrow and unrest that I was sitting on from not being able to work in my business and, um, on, you know, work, bring my gifts to the world, if you will, for a year, that was challenging. Um, the roller coaster emotions of living, you know, um, from having to tap into my savings for a year, which doesn't feel good, um, and brought up a lot of, pushed a lot of scarcity buttons, just all of that ebb and flow of emotions that had been 2020 for me. I got to the end of 2020 and I was completely burnt out. I took the whole month of January away from my business. I literally stepped away from my business entirely for almost three weeks or more. Didn't touch it. I couldn't. I, I, I had lost my passion and I had lost my joy. And when you lose your passion and your joy, you cannot be in service. So, um, so I, I then came back to it. The, the, the process is one of acceptance and I did not get there overnight, David, I would be lying if I said that I got there overnight, but it was my coming to coming to spirit, asking questions, getting the answers, and then still fighting, coming to spirit, asking for questions, getting the same answer and still fighting. Right. Coming to spirit, asking the question, getting the same answer, and still and still fighting. And I did that all of 2020 and until I got to 2021, 
And it was almost like I, I, I took a deep breath. I think what started, if I can be completely honest, what shifted it for me and probably for many others was news of the vaccination coming out because I don't care where you are on the spectrum of that conversation. If you're pro-vax, anti-vax, I don't care. The, the idea of a solution was the first time that I felt hope in the air for 10 months. And right. so it was, you know, it was like that, oh my God, maybe we'll eventually come out of this and that feeling. And, and so that started to shift for me, taking some time out from my business in January started to shift for me because I came back then at the end of January, re you know, passionate again and re-engaged. And then I just started to let some things go. And I started to ask for clarity in some other areas. And I started to answer, I started to actually listen to the answers and pay attention to the answers and let go of the doing and let go of the fighting. And quite frankly, let go of doing the, everything the way that other people are doing it right now in the entrepreneurial world. I understood that this was not for me. I got very clear on what my vision was, how I wanted my business to look, how I wanted it to run, how I wanted to bring people in, who I wanted to work with and how. And that is actually shifting. That's shifted greatly over the last two months as I've gotten increasing, mm -hmm. increasing, increasing clarity. So I would say it's a process for me. Now, some people will get to it much faster than I did, but I'm hard headed. I still have that East Coast you know, get her done perfectionist type A in me that I have to, you know, that battles with the woo in me like this, right. you know, yeah, those sure. are my, the two ends of me, my, my Aphrodite and my Athena for those of you who are goddess oriented, that's my two, my two goddess energies. So I just have to, um, I have to sit with that and, and really allow, allow it's about acceptance and allowance and, and, and flow and getting that crystal clarity around where I'm being pulled, who's coming to me, who I want to work with, and just owning that and really embracing it. And, and that sounds so simplistic, but I, I fought against that for a very long time. And I now, and, and, and there was the little breadcrumbs that were laid along the way. So again, it's not overnight. It's this conversation led me to this group led me to this individual, led me to this mastermind, led me to this introduction. I mean, it's these little breadcrumbs that got laid. So right, right. as my clarity grew, as I embraced flow more, more and more of these breadcrumbs were laid in front of me. And if you're, again, I don't care what your, what your, what your spiritual belief system is, you need to be alert to those breadcrumbs that get laid in front of you, those doors that open and doors that close because the doors that close, they close for a reason. The doors that are opening in front of you, pay attention to them, walk right. through them, at least see where they're, where they take you. Right. Right. Well, that's a lot of stuff that, that <laughs> Sorry, you, there. you asked. And, <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for, for sharing that. I also want to acknowledge, I saw Suzanne raised her hand there a moment ago um, Suzanne, if you have a comment or a question, please feel free to uh, post it in the, and anybody else, by the way, please feel free to post it in the chat and we will do our best to respond to uh, whatever we see there. Um, yeah, I'm, so, I'm an open book. So if there's any anything that I'm saying that people would like some greater clarification around, please ask because I'm, I'm a no holds barred kind of gal. Right. So the, the other thing I wanted to point out was you seem to be talking about doing, doing, doing and fighting and doing, 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 and fighting, which leads me to believe that maybe the doing, doing, doing was the fighting. It was. That's, I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's how it lands with me. And I think the idea of doing, doing, doing is kind of contrary to the idea of stand your ground. Maybe there was a subtle message in there. Yeah, stand your ground and pay attention to what's going on around you. Maybe there was that kind of a message. And this is something that we all have an opportunity to pay attention to. You know, you talk about um, our, our spiritual awareness and being clear about who we are and all the rest of that. I think it's important for us to, to listen carefully to the messages that are coming from our heart and our soul and let those guide us 
Because anything that comes from love is never wrong. When it comes from the ego, when it comes from trying to be right, trying to, to uh, make yourself look good, when it comes from that kind of thing, well, you know, things can often go wrong when, when that sort of thing happens. Yeah, and David, I'll clarify, and, and for the folks who are listening, this may resonate with some of them, especially if they're entrepreneurs. Um, I think that where the message that I got when I dropped into that stand your ground, that what I was really supposed to be doing in 2020 was to be putting my processes and my procedures in place and really dotting the I's and crossing the T's on all, everything business related and just really working on, on my business to kind of prepare for the onslaught for when retreats um, come back, which they have, by the way. And right. actually there's been people doing retreats all of 2021 and filling them, thank you very much. Um, so, and now, you know, 2022, I've got people coming out of the woodwork left and right that wanna be planning retreats and rightfully so. But um, that's the message. I didn't listen to that message. I got caught up in, where do I find more clients? Oh my God, where do I find more clients? Clients. How do I find more connections? Where do I look for JV partners? How do I where it's still, you know, I got caught up in that hamster wheel of, of how do I grow my business? How do I grow my business? How, it was on the sure. external facing. How do I bring mm -hmm. more people in? How do I make more connections? Now, some of those conversations were incredibly fruitful that I had last year. So I don't, I don't want to say that all of those endeavors that I undertook were for naught, but I, where, where I started, where the shifts started to happen is when I was less focused on who do I go out and, and, you know, how do I attract more clients versus this again, it's going to sound so simplistic. And I, I think this is something that I fought for a long time. And when I finally stepped into it, it was magical. So I'm just going to say this, okay, for what it's worth. When I really got a grasp on what is it that I am uniquely, uniquely here to do in terms of my gifts, my knowledge, my skill set, and who am I here to support and how? I had someone ask me in a mastermind, put a very pointed question to me about which, you know, the the ideal target, my ideal audience, and it was it was heart wrenching for me that question to have to answer it. I came back a month later, I answered it, and that was that's been the start of the shift of where I'm headed next in my business. So yeah. it's just interesting that one conversation, one question can shift everything for you. So that was really, I think, one of the big shifts that happened for me this year in 2021 in terms of really challenging, you know, or changing, I should say, where, where the path of where my business is headed. And now I can just see the doors start opening and everything's starting to go into flow. And I think that I, for, for a very long time, was too scared to step into that larger vision, or I didn't have the confidence to step into that larger vision, and right. or I didn't have the... Um, the network in place to step into that larger vision. So I say it's a process because there were elements that need to be laid in place for me to step into that. It's not that I proactively took a decision and, and then made the change, but it was a, a series of things that came together to help me get there. But I think really what it was at its heart, it was um, that uh, owning owning at a very deep, I would say, cellular heart, mind, body, spirit level, what it is that I'm here to do and here, who it is that I'm here to do it with and how. And it took yeah. me a while to get to that level of clarity. And 2020 was a year of gaining that clarity, gaining that, that I got crystal clear that I'm here to do in-person retreats with heart-centered entrepreneurs. Got it. And then I got to a whole new level of clarity in 2020 run about what that's actually gonna look like moving forward. And I say look moving forward because I don't know where the journey will take me. I know where it's gonna take me for the immediate future, but now I'm open to the universe being in the driver's seat and me being in the passenger seat. And I think that's the biggest shift because I was always trying to be in the driver's seat. Right. Yeah, and, and that's part of part of the situation that I think we all have to deal with. I noticed um, Suzanne mentioned uh, that she had a, a very similar experience to you where she stepped away from her business and found a shift that took place. So I think you're describing something that I think is very, very important. And uh, that is the idea of, first of all, becoming aware of what is really going on right now and accepting it for what it is. 
And rather than trying to fight it off and saying, no, that's not good. I can't, I can't let that into my life. Rather than, than allowing the trigger to put you into a place of resistance, start looking at what's actually going on and say, okay, this is what's happening. There's no, no point in my denying it or trying to fight it because this is what is. How can I, how can I be aware or, or be present with it? How can I maybe dance with it, you know, and not necessarily enjoy it, but at least, you know, be present to it. By the way, I'm noticing a little bit of feedback when I'm speaking, so I think maybe you're getting some echo on here. So if you could mute while I'm talking and I'll mute while you're talking, we'll eliminate that problem. But anyway, I'll, I'll put it back in your court now. Okay, thanks, David. I want to, you, you, what we're just saying brought up a couple of things for me. So first of all, I want to say something about the do, 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 do. Um, I think it is so easy to get into that space um, with, you know, as an entrepreneur in your business or just dealing with everything that you have going on in your life and in your household, right? What I have found to me is absolutely paramount is to have a spiritual practice, a meditation practice. And it looks different for me every day. It looks different for me every week. So I'd love to tell you, yes, I cordon off an hour every morning and talk to spirit. And that is not how it rolls around here, people. Like there's mornings I have to be up at 6 a.m. and making calls to Europe. And I'm a, that's a nine hour difference for me. I, I live in California. So it could be 10 minutes. It could be a half an hour. It could be me laying in bed right when I wake up and I'm talking with spirit when I'm in that theta state still, you know, half theta state. It could be me doing a formal sit down meditation on my side, Moroccan yard, you know, <laughs> entertainment area. It, um, it could be me curling up with my puppy dog and just, you know, <laughs> spooning my puppy dog and, and, and laying in, in sort of a trance state. So it takes it looks different ways at different times, but it is. I want to say mission critical for me for how I run my business and how I run my life is I ask for I ask for the answers from source and it's the only place to get the answers folks because you're not going to get a straight answer from the outside media right now I can tell you that um, and I don't care where your political leanings are it's like it's just a mess out there so uh, you know you've got to go internal and up for the answers and having that practice and allowing for that and having something that's at least semi regular uh, that you do to me is really critical because when you're in that do, do, do mode and, and David, I don't know if this is, if this is a little bit more a feminine trait than a masculine, but I know that when you are on in, in that do mode, you're not allowing for, you can't be in your creative flow. And some of those answers in those solutions and those, that, that clarity comes from that creative flow state. And so you have to give allowance for yourself somewhere in your day, somewhere in your week to be in that creative flow, because you're otherwise just never going to get that the juicy, juicy answers that you're looking for, for some of these obstacles that you may be facing. Right. So that's something I just wanted to mention that, that that's to me just, just mission critical. Yeah. I think that's a, a very important thing. The, um, the idea, first of all, the masculine feminine thing, um, I personally believe that we all share, uh, we, we all have both masculine and feminine qualities and traits and all the rest of it. Some tend to show up a little more than others, depending on what we're doing. Um, but then we're, there's also four primary archetypal energies that we all seem to share. And one of the first of these is the lover energy, which is all about emotion. All right. Then there's the uh, warrior energy, which is all about action, doing. And that's that's what you're talking about. And then there's the magician energy, which is all about thinking. It's all about using the brain. It's all about conceptualizing and optionalizing and all the rest. And then finally, there's the sovereign energy, which is all about vision and being, being present. So the sovereign energy really is that part that connects into your spiritual connection with source. That's how I see it. And there's masculine and feminine sides to all four of those energies too, by the way. So, you know, you're going to see a slightly different uh, form of, um, uh, uh, let's say, warrior energy when you see a woman in warrior versus a man in warrior. There's a, there's a, they have a different way of approaching things, but it's still the energy of, you know, setting boundaries and trying to be in a doing state, accomplishing your mission. 
Whereas you need to be in touch with your sovereign energy in order to be able to, to know what it is that your vision really entails. And if you're not paying attention, then you can go off and do something that you might think is in alignment with your mission and then discover later, uh oh, I took a, an accidental detour here and this is not really what I meant to create. But I totally agree with you that when you're in that busy space, it's hard to be in a creative space simultaneously. And, and it's important for people to understand that. So if you want to be in a creative space, then you have to kind of settle back into your beingness rather than your doingness and allow creativity to just flow naturally from within you. Sorry, I'm going back and forth with the muting. So, um, no, that's absolutely, absolutely right. And, you know, it wasn't until, um, it wasn't until I started letting go of some of the doing. And I think that's what, that was what was really beneficial for me taking that time off in January, because I got very clear on kind of the constraints I wanted to place around my calendar. I got very clear on the, the you know, I was going to limit myself on the number of Zoom calls I was going to do uh, in a day. Um, I was, I just was doing so many, I would get to the end of a day and I would just be exhausted, you know, in 2020. I just started, I started really putting uh, my self-care first. And, you know, I know we always talk about that. We always, I mean, well, oh God, how many, how many of us do we give lip service to that so much? And then we just don't do it, right? And it's the first thing that gets <laughs> kicked to the curb when you have a busy week. But it's like, no, I... I put, you know, my gym workouts are on the calendar. My, uh, you know, I do regular walks with my dogs. It's on the calendar. Um, you know, time with friends on the calendar. It just, it, there's, there are things that fill my cup and fill my soul. I mean, I continue to travel throughout 2020. That's one of the things for me, travel isn't just something I love to do. It's an extreme form of self-care for me. I mean, I, we clocked it. We, we, we took count that in between June of 2020 and June of 2021, I had taken 14 trips, including four to Mexico. So, you know, <laughs> I wasn't sitting home <laughs> feeling sorry for myself in that sense. So I just, I got out and about. So, and I had to go out and test the waters and see what it was like out there. If I was going to be helping clients do the same. So, um, you know, I just, I do all of these things to really amped, I, starting in 2021, I really got serious about the whole self-care thing and amped that up. And I have been really amping that up this year and staying true to that. And that's been, I think, part of, part of that flow that's come to me because it's, it's some of this sounds and it sounds so counterintuitive, right? But, you know, you've got to like actually put your own oxygen mask on first before you can be there for your business or for other people. You've got to be in your extreme self-care mode. You've got to be taking care of yourself and you've got to be giving yourself that allowance for that space, yeah. that space for creativity. And I think if you're doing those two things, I mean, those are the, if I could tell you the fundamental shifts that I've made, I mean, there are lots of other little nuances I could talk about, but it was not until I stepped into those two pieces in my calendaring, like as, as part of my lifestyle, and then also dropping into, you know, that place of greater confidence and greater clarity and greater, um, you know, self-assurance around going, you know, where I'm going to go with my, my, my company and my business next to that higher echelon of client that, you know, I got that level of clarity too. So all of these things, I can't tell you which came first, the chicken or the egg, like which which of those came first, but I will tell you that they all came in unison. And I don't think that's by accident, because right. I think that um, when I started to put my self-care first is when I started to really gain the um, gain the clarity and step into the flow. Right. And be led to where it is that I'm going next, which is feeling super exciting right now. So I, I just want to say those all that all went hand in hand. Right. But you went through a process, an important process, I think, of of accepting what was going on in your world. And that's something that I just really want to hammer home. Um, you know, just being able, you don't have to like what's going on. You know, you don't have to love it. Well, I think loving and, and liking are two different things. I think if you can accept something from a place of unconditional love and say, okay, this is here. I am, I am in the midst of it. 
How can I show up as the amazing, beautiful, magnificent, spiritual being of light and love that I'm supposed to be and still deal with this situation? How do I do it? And I think often that's the kind of challenge that we are faced with. And we don't always recognize it as such. Sometimes, you know, the ego mind is going to say, oh, look at that. The universe is out to get me again. You know, that's how we tend to respond. And that's what the ego mind wants to say. But that's not really true. You know, the ego, the, the universe isn't out to get anybody. The universe is just there doing what it does. Right. And we have the opportunity to accept things as they are and to deal with them with as much equanimity and love and, and uh, grace as we can muster. Or we can, as we talked about at the beginning, we can fight, fight, fight and try and just, you know, change it. But the, but the point I'm trying to make here is that change is going to happen, whether you like it or not. We are always going to be facing some kind of change. It's going to be different. Now, what's interesting to me about humans is that on some level, we love change. On some level, we love when something new comes along because it gets us all excited. We're like little kids at Christmas time. But on the other side, we're also, you know, ancient old adults who have had lots of bad experiences. And so we're afraid of the unknown part that comes about with change. So consequently, we may, we may be just fighting change for the sake of fighting it. And that's kind of what we need to wake up to. Change is going to happen. Can I simply be present to it and accept it with a, from a place of love and just learn from whatever that change is bringing to me and elevate myself, elevate my consciousness, elevate my awareness and my spirituality to the point where I allow the change then to help me grow? That's ultimately, I think, what we're, we're trying to teach here today. Yeah, I want to uh, touch on something you said, David, because you actually just brought up a really good point about where the fight came from. And that was me feeling that the universe, that, that, I, that, that the world was like conspiring for <laughs> my demise. Right. You know, because think about it. We go into the spring of 2020. I have to cancel all of these travel plans, personal travel plans, client travel plans. And then we get to the summer. I've got to cancel all the summer travel plans for myself, for all my clients. And I'm thinking, okay, great. For sure, we're going to be coming out of this by fall. Oh, no. We go into lockdown for like, what, the second time, in here, at least here in California, and I have to cancel everything for the fall. And by the fall, I like went into a little mini depression. So I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> you know, like, this is not I'm sure there were stronger me. words than that. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it PG. But anyway, um, right. but, you know, that, that you know, I, I just thought I, I had many meltdowns. I'm, I mean, hey, you know, uh, there were some tears shed. There were some swear words cursed. I'm just saying, uh, it it didn't look pretty sometimes. It was the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but I would I would get to these places. I would get in this funk of really thinking and feeling that all of the, these things that were happening in the world were conspiring to my demise. And there were things that I didn't have control over, which was even which made it even worse. You know, and it made it easy for me to go into that woe is me mode, which is not a mode I normally go into, by the way. I'm not a, I don't normally go there, but I went there a lot last fall, let me tell you. That's part of what led to my burnout in December, me having to take some time away. The other thing I want to say is you mentioned allowance and acceptance, and I just want to say something. And, and again, this is, God, this is going to sound so self-evident, but make sure that you have people in your world who can act as sounding boards for you and who can accept your vision, no matter how crazy or cuckoo it might sound. You know, I, I'm very fortunate that I have some of those people around me in my circles, in my personal life and in my professional sphere. Um, now I had a lot of people, I had a lot of people who kept telling me, and this was, I think the other thing, David, that was really challenging for me, really challenging. And I'm sure other people on this call are gonna be able to ap appreciate this. I had the, a lot of external voices telling me, you should do visual, I meant virtual retreats. You should do virtual retreats. What do you mean you want to do in-person retreats? Everything's virtual. Things are going to be virtual for the next two years. Are you like effing crazy? You should be doing virtual retreats. And I'm like, I don't like, let me say, could I say this any more clearly? I don't want to do <laughs> virtual retreats. Right. So, you know, and I, and I, it's like, I know they were well-meaning. 
I know it come it came from a place of either whether it was ego and rational, like this is what makes sense, or they cared about me and they didn't want me to be destitute out on a curb because I was making no money. But you know, they kept trying to steer me in that direction. And it was so hard for me. I mean, here I've got all these external forces. I've got everything coming at me from the media of what's happening in the world in lockdown, which I didn't want to pay attention to, but because of what I do, I had to look at the media. Um, I had all these external for forces coming, voices and forces coming at me saying, you should be doing this in your business. Why aren't you doing this in your business? You should be doing this. And so I'm, I'm dealing with all of that while I'm getting this internal message that is completely different from what all of this external stuff is saying. Right. That's right, a lot right, to right. handle. Like that's a lot to handle. Right. Yeah. Um, add it's like pushing a snowball uphill. It really? And like, oh, and add the scarcity, you know, scarcity things that were being brought up and my own, you know, fears being brought up. I mean, it was a shit show. Oh, I said that <laughs> on TV. <laughs> anyway, you can bleep that out. But um, so so I just want to say what was really important for me in in the light of all of that, aside from going into a fetal position and spooning my dog was, was having, uh, you know, having people around me who were amazing sounding boards. I mean, my partner, Doug, at one point, he's amazing. Anybody who, if you know him, he's amazing, um, supports me in so many ways. But, you know, at one point I said to him, what I said to you, I said, I feel like I'm a crazy person standing at the top of a mountain shouting, and there's nobody who can hear this message. And he said to me, which is a beautiful thing for someone to one human being to say to another. He said to me, that just means that you're on to the next genius idea and you just need to wait this out. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he, just to receive, sometimes receive validation, acknowledgement and validation and some TLC from the other people in your circle that you're not crazy. You're going to be okay. It's okay to vent. Um, it's okay if you have those moments of frustration because we're all human and we all have them when you do think the universe is conspiring, but then also people who encourage you on your spiritual journey to say, wow, good for you. That's, you know, hang in there. It's going to be okay. Like, it's great that you have this vision. It's great that you know that you're, you're solid on your mission. Let me help you get there. Let me help you hold space for you, you know, and, or whatever, you know, help you in some tangible way. Let me introduce you to X, Y, Z person or X, Y, Z mastermind. I had so many people step forward for me in that way. So I would say, you know, being clear on what you're here to do and sharing it with others and sharing it, making sure that you're with a tribe that supports you in that mission and the vision that you're clearly here to do is really super important and not hanging out with the folks who are telling you stuff you don't want to hear. Or they're telling you contrary to what you want to do. Um, and some of it, you know, I sit with, I sit with it because I know most of it comes in well-meaning and some of it is, you know, I'll take what sticks, but I, I, my, my internal uh, thermostat is so, sensitive right now to what is in in sync with me and what is in resonance with my mission and my vision and i can tell you in a heartbeat if it's if it's a move forward go or it's a no and right. so just gaining that level of clarity has been really valuable for me throughout 2020 and 2021 so get a right. good tribe get a good tribe right you know you hit on a couple of really good points there and one that i'd like to highlight is most people when you share something with them they're not listening from a place of understanding what's going on for, for you. More often than not, the moment you share some kind of a challenge that you're dealing with, people go instantly into problem solving mode. They figure if you've got a problem, then you want me to solve it. So it's really not about you at all when they're supposedly listening to you, it's about them. And so more often than not, you'll hear these people saying, oh, I have a great solution for you. Why don't you do this, 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 or this? You know, and uh, they're not really hearing what you're trying to share. And more often than not, the person doing the speaking just wants to be heard. So maybe we could practice that after this this uh, particular episode. When somebody shares something with you, you can say something like, wow, sounds like you've got some real challenges going on. I'm hearing that you, this happened, that happened, that happened. Tell me more. And if you really feel called to offer some help, ask them, well, are you asking for some support? Would you like me to give you a, my perspective on this? Or would you just like me to listen to what you have to say? You know, you can do it that way and be much more um, supportive of people. 
And those are the kinds of people I want in my tribe. And by the way, I just wanted to say thank you again, Suzanne. I see your, your uh, comment. Uh, she didn't step into virtual retreats either. She said it did not feel authentic. It was difficult on, on the believing in myself barometer. I like that. That's a good phrase. I think you used the word uh, uh, thermostat. Yeah. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> if that's a Suzanne, if that's a Suzanne, I think it is. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that's all really, really good stuff. We, we need to choose our tribe carefully and make sure that they are the kinds of people who support us in the way we really need to be supported. You know, I've had to say goodbye to some friends over the last year. And some, some friends have just, have just left without having completely unceremoniously because they didn't like some of the things I was saying. That's life. That's life. I wish them well. I love them from a distance. And I just say, I hope you have a great life. That's really all we can do. So Tamara, I, I, I'd like to go a little bit more now into this flow piece, talking more about trusting in the flow. First of all, finding the flow and then trusting in it once we get there. Would you want to share a little bit about how that went for you? Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, it just feels so much better to be in flow than it does in fight. <laughs> Can I just say for the record? <laughs> yeah, I know that. So, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things for me that when I know that I'm in flow is exactly what we talked about a second ago. When things, when things start to look in the external like they're not going the way that you quote unquote wanted imagined hoped for that you don't instantly get your panties in a bunch and think that the, the universe is trying to conspire against you um because it's for me when i can take that you know and i can i can feel i can feel the knee-jerk reaction of wanting to go there in the ego mind and i literally can catch myself and almost take a breath and be like no, this is like, I really am getting into a place of greater trust that the universe has it all figured out. Like, who am I? You know, like I'm one little like teeny weeny little peg and cog in the wheel kind of thing here. And, uh, you know, in this biggest, bigger machination of life. And um, it, God's a whole lot smarter than me. So I'm pretty sure he, she, it has it figured out. So uh, it's, and it's again, the, the things that they look like things aren't gonna fold, unfold like you wanted. And sometimes you have to understand it's not gonna go in the way that you planned, or it's definitely not gonna go in the timing in which you want it to go. It may still happen, but not in that neat little timing that you want it to go. And just sitting with that. And I sit now more, I'm more cognizant of when I'm, moving toward that energy of, of fight, like trying to roll the rock uphill, trying to make something happen, trying to do too much. And I, and I catch myself and that's when I will like, you know, literally go step outside, take five minutes, you know, sit outside in the sunshine, pet my dog. There's a lot of, you, you're going to, Buddy factors a lot into this. He's my dog. For those of you who know me and follow me on Facebook, he's very prominent on Facebook. He should have his own. He should have his own uh, account. But anyway, um, he's a, he's been as a saving grace. Um, so you know, it's it's taking those moments to really catch myself and being much more in flow. Now I'm very you know I just shared with you when we got on the call this morning before before we went live. I've had a very busy few weeks. Busy. You know, I've been I've, my plate is very full right now. But I keep in gratitude around that. And I every time I get my mind starts to go into that chatter of, I don't have enough time. Uh, oh, oh my God. It's like that, oh my God, ha, 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 where you feel yourself like starting to hyperventilate. Um, it's like I just quiet it and I go, no, it's it's gonna be it's it's good. I can handle all this. Everything is coming my way for a reason. I am in grace, I am in gratitude, and it's sort of having that that mantra of acceptance allowance and flow but i would say that to me is if you ask me you know these shifts i mean again i couldn't have told you like one thing but that is one thing is being able to catch myself when i have those knee-jerk reactions of feelings of anxiety desperation i don't do fear easily anyway but um maybe fear um 
but it's more anxiety or that again, you know, oh God, you know what, this is happening. Oh, why is this happening? And I go, nope, no, it's happening because it's meant to happen and you're here to embrace it. And mm-hmm. it's, it's easier said than done, but I, that's really started to become a regular, more regular practice for me. And I can tell you my anxiety is levels down. I sleep better. I'm still working out. I'm still meditating. So that helps. We eat tremendously well. Thanks to Doug, who's my chef gardener, IT guy and handyman. Um, so, and phenomenal cook. So, uh, you know, but all of that is happening. All of that's happening together. And that's all part of keeping my stamina and my energy up and my mental, my mental clarity and keeping me in that, in that flow state. So, Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just it's a beautiful process, but it's something that I have to be aware of. It's something that I continue to work on. Um, but the more that I'm just aware of it, that awareness piece was so huge for me because now I can catch it. And I can reframe, I can regroup, I can, you know, go, go, uh, go into um, a. Um, uh, what's the other word? It's not reaction. What is it? There's not reaction, but. Uh, Response. I can go into response instead of reaction. Yeah. So I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Stephanie's comment. She says, I love this. I've been recently experiencing flow myself after following my higher guidance to move from California to Arizona. I'm in that sit and be still place right now, not knowing the specifics of what's to come next. Staying in listening mode and following the crumbs. Yeah, that's a beautiful place to be. And, you know, Tamara, you mentioned two key words, I think, that are important, gratitude and grace. And gratitude is a really, really powerful force. If we can elevate ourselves to that level and just simply say, all right, I'm not sure why all this is happening, but is there a way for me to be grateful for it anyway? What gift is being presented to me right now in in this moment? How can I... uh, how can I accept this and be grateful for it and, and see the, the gift as it is meant to be seen by me? Others, people might see it differently. But, you know, just because I'm in flow doesn't mean that there isn't chaos going on around me. You can be completely centered, grounded in gratitude and in grace and in flow even amidst all that chaos. And it's just something that I think we have to practice. Yeah, David, that's a huge one because gratitude, you know, we talked about how it's so it's so easy as human beings to go into that. I mean, we're programmed at a very biological level to look for danger, right? Because that's, you know, back in the caveman days, we had to be alert and be looking for when the, the saber tooth, saber tooth, you know, lion was going to come out and attack us. So, you know, we still have that, that, amygdala brain that still we're operating in there but um you know where gratitude takes us is it takes us out of that oh my god the universe is conspiring against me to wow you know i'm okay even if hell you know the world is going to hell in a handbasket like i'm good i'm I'm good i have things that are, are working well in my life and that are going well and i i was given a huge lesson in gratitude I mean, it's there. Are, there are times when it's not easy to be in gratitude when you have so much going on, or there are certain factors in your life that feel like real tragedies and real, um, real obstacles and real challenges. And I think I was the biggest lesson I was ever given around grace and gratitude is when I was sitting for two weeks in the ICU with my mother as she was passing, and I was in you know meditation and prayer. I went to a chapel one morning, and. Um, I was in meditation and I was actually shown the soul contract that she and I had signed before we came into this lifetime together. And the gift, I I really, I was realizing even then all the gifts that being with her in those two weeks was, was, were giving, was giving me. Right. And you want to talk about a huge lesson in grace and gratitude. And I'm sorry, I'm like getting choked up right now, but um, that was, that was a huge one for me that I could be in such a space with um, on the external where it was not a good scenario at all. I mean, I was hardly sleeping and, you know, obviously this is the person I was closest to in the world and watching her pass. And that was very difficult, but um, at the same time to be offered the opportunity to be shown grace and gratitude in that, in that time period was I think the biggest lesson for me that even if all else looks 
like the, it looks like the the absolute worst case scenario, you know, on the external, there is still so much to be grateful for. And there is still gratitude and grace that you can find even in those places and spaces. And I think to hold on to that, um, you know, that was a huge shift for me in, in, in my life to understand that you can still be in grace and gratitude. And there's always grace and gratitude to be found, no matter what the scenario. And I think I realized, finally stepped into that more fully again in 2021. And that's part of what's helped me go into this flow state. So I would just say mm -hmm. that grace and gratitude are huge. And if you're ever having a pity party for yourself, to the absolutely the way to get yourself out of that and to reframe in a heartbeat is to think in that moment, what can I be thankful? What do I have that I can be thankful for? Because right. there is always something. There is always something that you can be thankful right. for because the universe is always supporting you. Um, even when you don't realize it or even when you don't want to acknowledge it, the universe always has your back. You know, Tamara, there's there's something I mean, people like you and me who do this kind of work with clients all the time. I think we have a fundamental belief in the um, immortality of of of, of our uh, spiritual nature. We, we existed before we came into this physical form and we will continue to exist long after that goes away. I have really come to embrace that belief to the deepest part of my core. I just know with absolute certainty that it is true. So consequently, I find it far easier nowadays to be in gratitude even if it appears that my physical body is about to be hurt or damaged or even potentially destroyed, there's still a way of, of being in gratitude in that moment. It's my ego mind won't stop talking. And sometimes I have to work hard to keep it quiet. I think the, the biggest example I can give of that scenario is back in August of 2013 when I had a car accident. I was, I literally fell asleep on the highway at 65 miles an hour and somehow ended up going through the trees. And um, literally I flew between two giant oak trees, which kind of squeezed the car, slowed it down and it just landed on the ground. In that moment, I realized contrary to what people might believe, the universe is actually conspiring to make life better for me. And I also knew in that moment that there's a reason why I didn't die that day. There's something I am supposed to do. Maybe I haven't quite figured it out yet, and that's okay. But I'm I'm trying to do it now. You know, I'm trying to bring that message of hope and 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 gratitude and joy and and fulfillment and flow for people to understand and experience for themselves. And you mentioned at the beginning or towards the beginning of this that you were you felt like you were on top of a mountain shouting to an empty empty ground below and nobody's listening. Well, sometimes I feel that way too. But what I do know is all that matters is that one person, one person has to hear my message. That's all. If, I, if that happens and somebody's life is changed for the better as a result, then I've done my job. Now, of course, I hope I do better than that, but let's not try and judge it before it happens, you know? Wow, it's it's already been close to an hour. We're almost running out of time here. Um, to, but Tamara, I want to give you a couple of minutes here to just, if you have a final message you'd like to share before we close out, I'd like to, you know, just give you an opportunity to do that. Also, I understand you have a gift that you'd like or a recommendation that you'd like to offer. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll put something, um, let me just put something in the chat. I'll pop it in the chat and people can take a look. And by the way, Stephanie, I'm so proud of you. I bet it, Stephanie moved to Arizona and I'm so excited for you about what your next chapter is going to be. I can't wait to hear. And, um, you know, I would think, I, I think here's the biggest message I could say to people. I mean, honestly, the biggest, biggest message is um, to take the time it's it's really there's three things if it boils down to three things david it would be these three have a spiritual practice whatever that looks like for you even if it means just walking in the woods have a spiritual practice where you give yourself that space to receive guidance from the universe about your best next steps because that's big um number two be true to your message and your be true to your mission and your vision 
All right, whatever mission and vision you know you're here to do, when you get that clarity, stick to it and be unashamed, unashamedly and unabashedly you and just move forward in doing it. Yeah. And number three, get a good tribe. You know, get surround yourself with people who will love you, pick you up when you stumble, um, allow you to vent when you're having a when you're having just a moment and you need to let some steam off, um, who will lovingly course correct you when they see you going off course of the, off the course you've shared that you want to be on. Uh, you know, those true friends who will be there for you at thick and thin, but also tell you you've got spinach in your teeth. You know the kind. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I would say those are my three things, my three takeaways. It, um, honestly, if you have those three things in place, well, and I would say there's a fourth. You got to exercise the self-care. You got to, right. you got to, you got to put the self-care in there and you got to, you got to really make sure you are filling your cup so that you can fulfill that mission and that vision and be there also for those friends of yours who are there for you. So I think it's those four things. It boils down to those four. That's it honestly beautiful. does. Yeah, I love that. Those are wonderful uh, pieces of advice and recommendation. And by the way, I just like to mention to folks, um, if you're looking for a tribe, one of the best places you can be is right here on the wellness universe. There's some amazing people in the wellness universe. So think about joining and becoming a member if you're not already. And uh, certainly connect with me once you once you join. That would be something that I would love to have. But I want to thank you all for watching today's program, for being here with us. And I'd like to remind people that you can watch recordings of this and every other show that, that I've ever done over on my website at lifemasterytv.com. That's life-mastery-tv.com. I, uh, I truly hope you all enjoyed this presentation. I'd like to remind you that you're going to receive an email within the next couple hours or so from Learn It Live asking you to uh, fill out a, a review. So I'd appreciate it if you could do that. We love our four and five star reviews, and especially when they're coming from the heart. And finally, I'd like to remind you about my favorite little meditation. It's called the Life Mastery Mantra. And I'm going to ask you to learn it and try and use it at least once a day. It goes like this. I gratefully forgive the imperfect being I have been in the past. I gratefully accept the magnificent being I am right now. I gratefully welcome the evolved being I am becoming in each new moment. So until we meet again, uh, my name is David McLeod. I am your Life Mastery Coach, wishing you love, light, and blessings on your continuing journey. We'll see you next time right here on Life Mastery TV. Bye-bye.